stampede. Hello and welcome to the Norfolk Broads, more specifically Brograve Mill, an icon of the Broads. This is probably one of the most photographed spots in Norfolk. Let me get set up and then we'll take a look around. There's no really suitable spots at the mill, so I'm pressing on. I really need to stop calling it a mill. It's a drainage pump. How inviting does that look? Finally think I've found a place to camp. I couldn't stay too close to the mill because there's some uh, heavy bovine activity around that area. Um, wow. That was a bit of a rush, trying to set up, time lapse the sun, and now cook tea. I have a new bit of kit to trial. This is the jet boil stash. I'll let you know how well it performs when I cook dinner. This is a cheap little gel frazy from Asda. I have to say, I'm pleasantly surprised with the uh, simmer control on this jet boil stash. It's not as good as the Minimo, but it's adequate. Look how authentically Indian that looks. Rather surprisingly, that Asda chicken jalfrezi was lush. I think it's time for me to turn in now. It's been a long old day. So I'm just gonna get warmed up and get in my sleeping bag.
jet boil seems to be working out very well. I've been looking to cut some weight on my gear and this is considerably lighter than the Minimo. I didn't want to lose out on performance though, as as you know, I do like to cook. Initially, I was a bit worried that all you could really do on this stove was boil water. It does seem to simmer food quite well and works really well with the jet boil skillet. I do like the way it all nests together. As you can see in this footage from a recent wild camp, the temperatures dropped quite low, but despite it being below freezing, the jet boil stash performed excellently. The boil time I found was actually quicker than jet boil stated. What I didn't mention in the video was, is just how frugal this stove is. I've been using the same gas canister for quite a while now and it's still got loads left in it. Time for me to turn in now. I'll leave you with the footage from Brograve Mill. There's an atmosphere of deep melancholy around this building. It's very unsettling. I won't show you how I got over here. This place would be overrun with uh, urban explorers if they knew. What a fantastic place. Originally, the mill was fully cement rendered and then whitewashed. You can see some remnants of the render here. You need to be extremely wary around here. Some really deep pitfalls. My gosh. The list on that. It's very, very exciting, isn't it? My apologies on the wind noise. Shit. Oh, excuse my language. Blooming birds. The condition of the building is extremely precarious. And sadly, I don't think this building's got very long left. I won't go too far in. There's an owl box up there. And I don't want to disturb anything. Those dark spots in the brickwork are what's left of uh, the original tar waterproofing, mostly worn away now by uh, wind and rain. Despite the dilapidation, there's still evidence of the once great skills and craftsmanship that went into building this place. But one is inevitably reminded of Tempest Fugit. Time flies. Good night. I know what you're thinking, second breakfast. Well, if it's good for hobbits, it's good for me.
bit of a broken night's sleep. Stampede. Now, if you didn't know what that was, that would be absolutely terrifying. This is their home though, and you can't expect the wild to be civilized. Accommodation for the night was the Pioneer 2. Do you know, I've forgotten what a great tent this is. It's only 1.9 kg for a two man. It's like a palace compared to the uh, Helm one. I originally bought it for me and my girls to go out camping in. I'm gonna be a selfish daddy and uh, use it for myself. Well, as usual, I've waffled on far too much. I'm just going to lay here and watch the wheels go round. So I'll catch you all on the next one. Stay safe.